Hello everyone. My name is Martin Vician and I would like to welcome you to my bedroom. I know it's weird, but I am still working from home and this is my best option to record this video. I am currently living in Ireland. I'm working for IBM as a system administrator. I'm part of automation team where we use Ansible to manage our infrastructure and we do some nice testing of our Ansible code. So I would like to share some experience with that. I'm part of multinational team. So I'm doing this talk in English so my team can benefit from it as well. I'll be talking about three things today. First is Ansible. And I won't be covering the Ansible basics, so if you need a little bit of refreshment of this, you may pause this video and find some other topics on Linux days. That is similar for containers, so I will, I will be talking about Docker and Podman, but not the basics. I don't have time for this. The last thing is Molecule. Molecule is a testing framework for Ansible, and it's perfectly fine if you haven't heard about it yet. So, Ansible is great software, but it might be a little bit hard to use it properly. For example, you may be developing Ansible playbook and you are applying the playbook on some host. So, it's easy. You say, hey Ansible, I want this software to be installed, this service to be running, and this is the configuration. And that's all. But the Linux machine might already be in use for something else. So some requirements for some requirements for installation might already be in there and you don't discover this. So I might help you with that. Similarly, if you want to support various Linux dis distributions in different versions, it might be hard to make your playbook uh, be available for all of this. Again, I might help you with that. Uh, other thing is idempotence. This is really great. It's about that if you run some playbook, the end state should, should be always the same. So that's easy, but it might be hard to do, do in Ansible to write your code to be idempotent. And again, I might help you with that today. And the last thing is testing. You may wonder, why I would like to test my Ansible code? Well, I'm just saying the what I want from Ansible, that I want this to be installed, this to be running, and so on. And why would I test it? Well, you might benefit from it, and it is actually really easy to do, as you can see. So, with these first two points, containers may be the solution, as you can imagine that you can spin up the container anytime. It is it is not containing any additional software and you can get as much containers as, as you want in various distrib distributions in different versions. So that might be answer for the, the first two problems. And the second two problems might be answered by Molecule. So um, how you can get a fresh, oh, there is a typo. How you can get a fresh machine. So. Of course, you can use some service like IBM Cloud, AWS, and so on. It depends on if you have money for it, if your company is using them, and so on. Second thing is VirtualBox, and it's great, right? We all use it. <laughs> but it is a little bit slow as it contains all of the kernel, and even with Vagrant, it is slow. Ansible doesn't support VirtualBox directly. But you can you can but Vagrant supports Ansible very well. But again, the biggest problem here is that it is a little bit slow. What we can use is that we can use containers like Docker or Podman. And it sounds easy, right? Um, it's both well supported by Ansible, so your Ansible playbook code can contain information about oh start this container in this version and run this role or this playbook against it. And it works, it's great. So let's talk about possible problems there. First is that containers are not meant to be um, Linux machines in general. 
they are a little bit more like a packaging software. So if you see a normal Docker image, it contains information about install these requirements, copy this application and run the application. And you can imagine that there is no uh, startup script there. So, but our Ansible code contains a lot of about install engines and make sure that this engine is, is running. So we need upstart scripts in some kind, usually systemd. So we might need to tweak it a little bit. And I'll also be mentioning some problems with Docker on Fedora and uh, with Podman, the difference between Docker and Podman. First, systemd. So first, typical Docker container or typical container doesn't contain a systemd. Why would it, right? So that's different for official CentOS image. So it is prepared for you to use uh, systemd there. So that is really easy. You just need to specify volumes, TM, PFS, and entry point in your Ansible playbook, and it works. That's great. Unfortunately, this is not the case for Debian or Ubuntu, and you need to do it yourself. So you can either create your own Docker image, or you can use existing Docker image from, for example, Gearling Guy, and use it in similar, in similar way. So let me show you. So there is a Git repository here on this on this link. And there is a um, there is a playbook which I would like to show you today. So it's Docker.yaml, and it does exactly what I what I was saying. So there is a list of uh, containers which I want. I'm using Docker container to run it. I'm replacing some non-supported characters. That's easy. I'm adding the um, newly created container to inventory. I'm uh, listing all of the contain all of the hosts in the group and and I have a playbook which just test if it's there and it's including the first playbook. So when I actually run the playbook and I'm sorry I won't be running it again right now because it would take a long time. So I did it just before the presentation. So I run Ansible playbook pin.yaml and you can see that it it created these containers. It added the containers to inventory and um, it listed what is what's in the inventory and it the ping works. So I have the containers there and it's ready for my Ansible developing, Ansible code developing. So that's really easy, right? The only thing which you might also need is an easy way how to stop the containers and it's you can just update the first playbook state stopped and that's all. That is really easy. And give me a second. So here is my presentation again. If you use Fedora, and I must say that I'm a happy Fedora user, it's a little bit different because Docker doesn't work there in the same way as it is on other distributions. Um, if I can be honest, I don't understand exactly why. Maybe it's something with C group or SE Linux. I'm not 100% sure, but Fedora supports Podman very well and it's much better than Docker. So it doesn't require you to have a daemon. It doesn't uh, require to use root or to bypass it somehow. So please, if, if you are interested, test it. But I must say there is one glitch. You actually cannot use CentOS 7 image with systemd in Podman. There is a problem with C group versions and it just doesn't work and there is no known fix or I don't know. And Podman is working without the daemon and it's a little bit weird that if you uh, create the Docker containers in your playbook, you run it, you run Ansible playbook on it, it's great. And if you do it again, it's not creating the containers again for Podman. It's recreating every single time. It is a little bit weird. 
but it's really easy to fix this so you can just you can just leave the containers there and not create the container if it's already existing that is easy this playbook is in the git repository as well so if you want use it it's there for you mm. so that's it so let's dig into molecule as i said molecule is test framework for ansible it supports docker podman and other services uh, i will be using it with docker today so you know docker is supported on macbooks as well and i think windows as well um, docker works in a way that you um, create content it, it creates containers for you in a distribution and versions which you want and it runs your ansible code against these containers um, there might be some task which you do, which you don't want to be tested in molecule so you can just use stack to skip this um, read it in manual it's really easy the manual is well written so let's go and see how it works so um, i'm switching here so uh, I, I deleted my previous try if it works so you can a molecule has a molecule in it as a command to create the basics directory for you so you, it's molecule in it role minus d which defines the driver so docker for us is this time and the name of the role which is nginx zero for now so i'm creating this and you see that it has been created so i go there and i list the files there so it's pretty basics right the only new thing here is directory molecule so let's go there and let's go to see molecule.yaml which is um which is the basic configuration for molecule itself so you can see that there is some dependency driver which we which we used and platforms this is the definition of the different container images which we would like to use so you can see that by default it's centos 8 and provisions very far at all uh, atc so let's go to converge and you can see that the only thing which is there is that the engine zero role will be will be used for it so okay i get it that it's gonna use the role for the testing that's easy the really important um, file is verify.yaml and it is listing all of the tests which you would like to use so if i am using nginx so i can imagine that these tests should be okay so is it nginx installed is it nginx service actually running is there something answering on port 80 and it, when i try to connect when i try connect there am i uh, is the uh, code is the answer code from http 200 and what is the content on on it so is there some specific keyword so that's it and you can see that that was really easy if i would like to use this i can just change task slash main and do it so uh, let's go to presentation um, and let's see how the metrics is done so i can see what molecule is doing by running molecule metrics test molecule metrics test and you can see that it is something that this is the options which i will be which which will be run so they are something like dependency link cleanup and so on so lint is here for linting your code you can put ansible in there and yaml lint and basically anything which you want ansible lint is great because it's gonna test if there is first if there is some um, syntax typo or anything like that and if your code is um, 
is using the Ansible standards defined by Ansible Lint. So for example, if all tasks are named or um, if, you, if, if when you are creating some files, if there is a de defined permissions for the files and so on. This is great. The good thing is that this is run before the actual test. So when you run molecule, it's going to do this first. And when it fails, it's, it's going to stop. So you can save the time. Other interesting things are a create. It's actually creating the containers for you. Prepare. You can define some action which are done before uh, the test. So it can be something like um, make the Docker to look like my testing machine in my testing environment. Uh, converge. That's the actual test. And we already saw the converge playbook. Idempotence. I think that's one of the best things there. So what it does is that it actually run the converge first. So it runs your code. And then the idempotence is a second run. And it's checking if something something has been changed on the on the machine. Because if, if your code is idempotence, you know, all of the changes should have happened in the first run of the playbook. So for example, if you configure some file, you know, it should already be in the state you want it. And if there is something which has been changed in the second uh, run again, that's weird, and it means that it is very probably not idempotent. Um, if you are using an uh, Ansible module like command or shell, that might be a little bit hard to do it like this, so you need to use uh, change to when and define what is the ch how to recognize the changes in this you know, um, bash command. But um, it is really good to do this because then you can run your playbook in your infrastructure and you know only the, only about the changes there. So this is really important. Um, we also verify and destroy is uh, it is destroying the containers, the created containers for the test again. So let's see how it works. So I have a Engine one, engines one role, and we can see that there is a tasks main, and it it is only installing packages, configuring engines. You can see that it's restarting the service, so this is problem, right? Because it's gonna restart the service again, so this is not idempotent, and it's changing the default web page here. So again, I'm not running it right now because it would take um, one something about one minute and I don't want to waste the time so here is the start so you can run, you can use it by molecule test and see it tried to destroy pre-existing images then it's creating the image so uh, sorry it's creating the container and now it's running, there is no prepare playbook for now. And it's running our code. This is all of the things that we saw. Now it's running it again. And you see that it is again tried to restart it the engines. And there is an error. It's not idempotent. So that's great. And we already know what is the problem there. Um, so cool thing is that if you I show you the first part of the presentation was about creating the docker in playbook but you can actually use molecule to create it for you so if you run molecule create it's gonna create the containers molecule converge would run the your, the, your role on the on the created host and now you can just pause the the molecule so it's just it's not going to destroy it for now. And you can go and you can connect to the images to your created instances. And you can see what's actually there, what is the status there, and how, how do, what, what might be the problem there. And when you're done with your debugging, you can just destroy the images. This is very useful. So, and I also wanted to show you engines 
two roll, which is here. And let's see the molecule definition here. So I did a little bit tweaking here. So I, I have Cento state, Cento 7, Ubuntu 18, Ubuntu 20, Debian 10, and Debian 11. I also have a prepare playbook here. Uh, molecule default prepare, which is updating the cache on Debian family host. Um, that's uh, because when you would install Nginx on Debian host from um, on Docker containers, it doesn't have the, the information from the um, uh, how is it called from the repository? So you need to refresh it again. You might have this in your role. That's up to you. I put it to the pre prepare.yaml to demonstrate how it works. I also updated the verify playbook. So I put here exactly what I was uh, saying. So it's verifying that Nginx is installed. It's verifying that Nginx is running. It's checking if the port 80 is available and it's grabbing the content from there and it's actually checking if the content contains only the inventory host name. So, and the tasks is almost the same. And on Red Hat Family 7, I needed to install Apple, um, Apple repository. Otherwise there is no Nginx and that's all. I have also one handler here to restart anything. So when I show you how it, how it runs, so I'll go up. Okay, I'll go up, 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 up. So again, molecule dust. It tried to destroy pre-existing images. It is creating the images here. Um, that's the creating. Now it's running the Prepare playbook, and you can see that on Debian is updating the cache. On CentOS, it's it's not doing anything. Um, now it's running the actual playbook, so it's enabling Apple only on CentOS 7. It's installing Nginx. It's configuring Nginx. It's making sure that it's started and is enabled. It's changing the default web page and restarting the Nginx as a handler, and it's done. And you can see that the item potents check was fine as well. And now the verify, which is which is the fun to be honest. So it's verifying that Nginx is installed. It is running. Port 80 is available. I'm just uh, debugging here what is the default web page. And now um, uh, it is the a default web page contains only the information about the inventory host name, so everything was fine. So that's great. So as you can see, it was very easy to test my role against CentOS 7, 8, Ubuntu in two versions and Debian in two versions. So that was easy, but you can see how you can ask your developers to do this. So you might want to do an automatic test. And that's really easy, right? So you can just uh, molecule supports various uh, continuous integrations from Travis to GitLab CI to GitHub Actions and so on and so on. Uh, and it is really easy. You just say uh, go to this role directory, run molecule test, and it's done. But it's probably better to split it to several jobs. So let me show how show you how I did this. So there is Nginx free roles, a free role, and what I did is that I've changed the molecule configuration. So there is the there is a variable name and a variable image, and this is filled by uh, uh, GitLab CI. So if I I can show you GitLab CI. So I am installing the requirements. Um, there is this test of first two role, but let's focus on the third. So that basically is go to roles engine free, run molecule test. And here I am defining the image for it. 
and I'm also adding the lint because as I said Ansible, uh, sorry, Molecule can do the linting for you but you might want to have it separately if you are running it as automatic tests and let's go how it let's go to see how it looks like so you can check it on my GitLab I make it a bit better for you um, so there is three uh, four pipelines uh, but let's focus on the first one so on the last one so it looks like this and you can see that it was okay jobs maybe better here so these are the invar uh, the variables uh, filled by by GitLab CI and we can see for example uh, Debian 10 so you can see that it done the exact thing that we wanted so it created the uh, Debian 10 image Debian 10 and it ran the playbook and by the item potents and it's done uh, the cool thing is that you mm, very probably you might see that the only one operate uh, one Linux distribution is failing in this particular version and if you would have it only in one pipeline it might get be hard to see the problem there because it it, it would be hidden somewhere there so this is really easy and in GitLab it's it's better to run bytecode one uh, to use variable bytecode one and I think I'm using another another variables here to make to, to see nice cores and yes so that's it um show you this uh, do this show you the pipelines so I think that's the end of my my talk um. Just a few hints before I end. Uh, when you are doing the automatic tests, you might want to uh, optimize your resource usage. So you might want to either split the role to separate Git repositories, because you know in that in this way you would test only the roles which which was changed, or you can check in the um, if the if the role was uh, changed and then run the test only for the role for this role uh, i recommend you to write uh, more code standards than on um, ansible is great but probably your company or uh, or you want to do some other standards for example like don't use ignore errors or um, use white spaces instead of tabulators and so on and of course uh, when you are when you are combining couple of roles together it might be a little bit hard for testing um, and I'm not covering this so thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed the talk and I hope you learned something today if you have any questions just write me an email and um, I hope to see you in person again when it's going to be possible. Thank you. Bye-bye.